Hey, what's up, guys? Um, we're back here again for another Wednesday. It is our first Wednesday of a new series we're calling Ghosted, going through the month of May. Um, I'm super excited to be here with you. We have Jim and Allison leading us in worship today. Um, I'm super excited. Um, I, I just know God's going to move today. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to open up in worship. So, God, I thank you for today. Um, I thank you for what you're going to do. Um, I just ask that, that you'd be present. Um, whoever's watching would, would just feel your presence. Um, I ask that you'd be here with us as, as we worship. Um, God, just, just be glorified through, through what we're doing today. Just speak to us. Um, do, do whatever you want to do tonight. Thank you. The floor is yours. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Amen. Oh 
Hey guys, what's up? I'm back here again. It is our Wednesday night service. It's the first one we're going to be having in May. Um, as you know, we are in a series for the rest of this month called Ghosted. I'm, I'm super excited about it. I really believe God wants to move and God's going to move through it. Um, I'm just really excited for it. But before we get into it, um, I, I need to define what, a, what ghosting someone is. And I know there, there may be people in here that, that have been ghosted. There may be people who have ghosted somebody else. Um, but for those of you that don't know, ghosting is when a person cuts off all communication with their friend or the person they're dating with zero warning or notice beforehand. So ghosting is when you completely cut someone off and don't even tell them why or don't even give them a reason to why you stop talking to them. And, and, and I'm sure there's a couple people in here who have been ghosted. I'm sure there's some people may have ghosted somebody you were dating, uh, maybe, maybe ghosted a friend because you didn't want to hang out with them. I know I have accidentally ghosted people by not responding to their texts when I think I have. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have done that as well. Ghosting is, is super common, and maybe you, you have been ghosted by someone else. Chances are you or, or someone you know have been or has ghosted. And being ghosted can bring a lot of emotions. There can be a lot of mixed emotions, and, and, it, and it can bring a lot of that. Mixed feelings, mixed emotions, and, and in this day and age with, with social media, being able to, to talk to anybody, being able to text anybody, or, or even being able to FaceTime or, or know what's happening in China uh, minutes after it happens, ghosting someone really doesn't make any sense. We have the ability to, con to connect with anybody online um, through our, our little, a little brick that we have in our pocket but yet we still cut off communication without even um, letting them know why or what. If it really doesn't make sense, but for some reason, sadly, it still happens. And, and some of you may be caught in this emotions. Maybe you were ghosted. Um, maybe, maybe you have been ghosted, but some of you are probably feeling a lot of mixed emotions. Maybe you're even feeling lonely because cause you haven't been to school, maybe you haven't seen your friends because you've been on lockdown. Uh, maybe, maybe you've been feeling anxious. You've been feeling stressed for your family financially. Uh, you don't know when your family's next paycheck is going to come. You don't know uh, when your paycheck is going to come for those that are older. You don't know if, if your job's going to be back after, this, after the world re refocuses and, and gets to open. Maybe even some of you are feeling angry. Maybe, maybe you're feeling angry at your family because you're not getting along while you're stuck in quarantine. Maybe you're, you're, you're feeling angry at your friends because you're not communicating as well as you should be. Or, or maybe you're even just mad at God. Maybe, maybe you're mad at God because cause he let this happen and, and, and maybe, maybe some severe things have happened in, in, in your life because of this. Maybe, maybe your family has been hurt and, and, and because of this. But whatever emotions you may be experiencing during this time, I don't want to discredit your emotions. I don't want to discredit the feelings that you are feeling because they are legit. Your feelings and your emotions are legit. You feel them. But whatever pain, whatever emotions or, or stress or anxiety that you are feeling, um, you, you may be experiencing during this time, it's, it's real. And during this series, I want to look at different people in the Bible who were experiencing mixed emotions that were feeling uh, just, just really heavy in spirit and, and what they did when they were experiencing this, these emotions and this pain too. Uh, we're going to be looking at the disciples because if the disciples and other people in the Bible felt it, chances are we're probably going to feel them too. Because emotions happen, and whatever the pain or emotions you've been experiencing, they, they, they may be wondering, they may be making you wonder if, if God is still here with, with your prom being canceled, with, with all this happening. You may be wondering if, if God is still here. And, and maybe for the older people, for the seniors, 
you you might have lost your final semester of high school you might have lost your senior prom you you might have lost someone you might have lost a loved one to COVID-19 or maybe you lost someone uh, close to your heart maybe it wasn't from COVID-19 but still you lost them and and with this lock-in happening with with the stay-at-home order you haven't been able to connect with your family like you should during this time you haven't been able to to really be with with your family like you should maybe for the athletes maybe you missed uh, your your state run Maybe this was finally the year you've been training your whole high school for, and, and you were just so excited. You were, you were on the state team, and, and you were on your track to win state. But it got taken from you. Maybe, maybe you see the world around you, and you're questioning God's existence. And, and not being able to gather has been a struggle because you see the ones, you can't see the ones you love. There's a lot of people going through immense storms right now, and I don't want to discredit your pain. I don't want to discredit your emotions because what you are feeling is legit. We are in a fallen world, and we feel these emotions. Maybe you, you feel ghosted, like God has left you. Maybe you feel like he has cut all communications from you. Maybe your family has cut all communications from you. I want you to know. Maybe you feel far from God. I want you to know that I need you to know that you are not alone. And I need you to know that he has not left you. God is still with you. He has not left you. You are not alone and God has not left you. And, and this may seem really dark. Like, like Devin, why are you talking about this? Why, why are you taking so long on, on the pain and, and, and the hurt? Why are you talking about this right now? Because I believe that through this series that, that God is going gonna, is gonna to help you. He's going to bring you back to him. He's going to push you forward towards his purpose. And, and I believe that this series is going to heal someone. I, I believe this series is going to help push you towards him. It's going to bring people closer to God. And, and I want you to know that, that God may feel far. He may feel far right now, but he's standing with you wherever you are. You are never alone. God is, God is over everything. He is omnipresent. He is with you always. You are never alone. You are not alone. God has not left you. He has not forsaken you. And tonight, we're going to look at the disciples. We're going to be looking at the disciples when they felt ghosted, when, when they felt like, like Jesus was gone for good, when they felt alone and, and their emotions were just so heavy on them, they felt ghosted. And, and they felt ghosted, and when, when they see their leader has been followed, they've been following for three years, the one who they called Messiah, the one person who would bring salvation to everyone. They're following this guy, and they see him taken away, being beaten, hung on a cross, and stuck in a tomb to die. We see the disciples, and we see the disciples feeling ghosted, feeling like they just lost their leader, feeling hopeless, feeling abandoned. They felt lost without Jesus. But Jesus spoke about his death three times Three times in Matthew, it's Matthew 16, Matthew 17, and Matthew 20. And I want to look at 20 today. It says, listen, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, listen, we are going to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die. They will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip, and crucified. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. He spoke about his own death three times. The disciples were told it was going to happen, but yet John was the only disciple who was, who was with Jesus when he got crucified. They, they, he spoke about it three times, but yet I, I, I don't know exactly what was going through their mind, but they either denied it. They, I know Peter rebuked him, or Peter rebuked Jesus when he said that he was going to go and die. Uh, they, they were just feeling so 
betrayed. They were feeling so lost. And, and these 11 disciples, there was only 11 because Judas had already hung himself. Uh, they, they were left without their Savior. They were left without their leader. And we know with hindsight that Jesus rose on Sunday and that the tomb was eventually rolled away and Jesus walked out. But for those three days, the disciples had lost Jesus. For those three days, they didn't have Jesus. Now, Jesus' spirit was not dead, but his physical body was in the tomb. And during those three days, I can only imagine what the disciples were feeling. Maybe they were, they were are they going to kill me next? Is, is he really coming back? Is he really who he says he is? Is it over for us? Who knows what the whirlwind of emotions and thoughts were going through their head? The disciples felt ghosted. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for the world's sins. He was perfect. He was a sinless Passover lamb that, that, that helped us get overlooked, that helped bring salvation. Jesus had to die in order to bring salvation, in order for it to be freely available for humanity. And Jesus, he had to go so the Holy Spirit could come. And it's easy for us to say, because because we weren't in that situation, it's easy for us to say, reading the book and looking at the stories, but for the people who were with Jesus every day for three years, it must have been a hard pill to swallow. It must have been hard to take. Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit and the disciples in John 16. It says this, But now I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate, some translations say helper, won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. He, in this, in this verse, he says, it's better for you if I go away. If I don't go away, the advocate or the helper won't come. The Holy Spirit will not come if I don't die. If we look at Jesus' death, it appears as if he's ghosting his disciples and leaving his disciples in the dust. But he's not. Jesus wasn't ghosting his disciples. He was gifting them. Jesus was not ghosting his disciples. He was gifting them. He had to die in order for all of us, for all of them, to receive his spirit. It, 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 it's, it looked as if Jesus was, was ghosting his disciples, but he was actually holy ghosting them, that, that he was giving them the Holy Spirit, that he had to go in order to bring the Spirit. And this whole time, this whole situation, we've, we've been looking at it wrong, that, that they felt betrayed, they felt, they felt all this, we've been looking at the situation wrong, that they were never ghosted, they were gifted. Jesus, he gave his life for us. Jesus, he, 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 bring, he brought salvation to us. He brings us salvation freely. He gave us his spirit and God gave his son for us. Now we're going to look deeper into this story next week. But I want to really stress this point that we are not ghosted. We are gifted. John 13 says that God gave his son so whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life and and i say all this about ghosting and and how the disciples felt because i really believe tonight that god is calling some of you back some of you may maybe have ran some of you maybe have have been blocking god out you've you've put a barrier in between you and god but i really believe that tonight god is calling you back he he says my child come back he he's running after you and all you have to do is turn he's he's been chasing you down for so long and all you have to do is invite him in all you have to do is invite him in he's calling us to lay down all of our pain all of our all of our pain, all of our unmet expectations of this year, all of our emptiness, and give it, lay it down at his feet tonight. Lay it down at his feet tonight. Jesus died so that you can have a right relationship with God. You can, you can be in right standings with Jesus. He was 
the worthy Passover lamb so that you can let go what you're holding on to tonight. You can let go of what you're holding on to tonight. You don't have to hold on to what's been crippling you for so long. You can let go and drop it at Jesus' feet. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So that we can be made right with God. Tonight, you, you can lay down your, your unmet expectations. You can lay down all the, all the apathy you've had. You can lay down all the anger you've had towards your family. You can lay down all, all, the, all the stress you've had because of finals week. You can, you can lay down all of your emotions at Jesus' feet tonight. And, and, and he died on a cross to, to carry that weight. He carried all the weight that we put him on, that we put on him. And it says that if you confess out of your mouth and believe in your heart, you can be right with God. You, you can give up the hurts you've been holding. You can give up all the, all the pain you've been holding on to, all the, all the pain that you feel like you need to have, all the, all the stress that you've had. You can give it up to God because you are not ghosted. You are gifted. You are gifted with His Spirit. You are gifted with salvation. You are gifted with His Spirit abundant. You are gifted with a right relationship with God. You can give up the hurt you've been holding. You can give up the feeling of being ghosted because you are gifted. And I just want to give you, whoever's watching, I just want to give you a chance to, to come to God and be right with Him. Because God is calling you, God is calling you to Him. He is calling you, He's calling you His son. He's calling you His daughter, and He wants to be in relationship with you. You can let go of that ghosted feeling. So I'm gonna ask everyone that that, that that's watching to to repeat the words after me, and just know that the words themselves don't don't bury any strength, but the person that we're praying them to does and and if you say this and you believe it in your heart and you announce it with with your tongue you will be saved and so I'm just gonna pray if w would you repeat this after me God I know I have sinned I know I have hurt you and I know I am broken I give you all of me, all of my brokenness, all of my anger, and all of my selfishness. I believe that you died on a cross and rose again for me. Would you come and be the Lord of my life? Save me, use me, and heal me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, please text me. Please text one of our leaders. Uh, I, I, I want to talk with you and 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 talk with what the next steps are. Um, but for the rest of you, I, I just want to challenge you with, with what have you been holding? What have you been holding on that, that God's calling you to let go? Whether it's this anger, whether it's anxiety, whether it's, it's this stress, tonight God is calling you to lay it down because you are not ghosted. You are gifted. So I'm going to pray for for everyone else too and and so yeah God we just I just thank you for who you are I, I thank you that that your grace is free it's a free gift for everybody and it's it's sufficient to wipe us clean God we give you all of our struggles we give you all of our hearts we give you all of our unmet expectations and and we just ask that that you'd wipe it away you died on a cross 
so that we could be right with you and, and we don't have to carry what we've been carrying. So God, just, just as we lay it down, take it off of us. We ask that, that you'd be present in, in our living rooms, you'd be present right now in our bedrooms, you'd be present right now on our futons. God, we love you, and, and we want to we wanna strengthen our relationship with you. We want to dive more into your word. We want to seek you more. So God, have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our pain. Have your way in our hurting. Because we can't do it without you. God, do what only you can do. Split the waves. Rise the dead. Raise the dead. And, and you call us your, your sons and daughters. So God, closing, I just ask that you, you'd be with us. You'd push us towards you. And then you just help us to, to lay down what we can't hold on to anymore. Jesus, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you did on the cross. And I thank you for what you did tonight and, and what you're going to do in all of our lives. In your name, everybody said, amen. Amen. It was super awesome to be with you here tonight. Um, if, if you gave your heart to Jesus for the first time, or maybe it was a rededication, contact me, contact one of our leaders, because cause we want to we wanna talk to you, we want to show you the next steps, and, and most importantly, we want to be a community for you. You are not alone. You are not forsaken. God is still with you. You are not ghosted. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful week. Peace.